Hello and welcome to this Beyond Shakespeare exploring session of a play known in the manuscript source as Secunda Pastorum, but which we all know and love as the Second Shepherd's Play by an anonymous hand known as the Wakefield Master, uh, which always struck me as a bit sexist. Could be the Wakefield Mistress, could be the Wakefield Non-Binary, we don't know. Um, and uh, we, we do probably know that it was written between 1400 and 1450 and to read this play we have assembled a marvelous team of readers uh, on several continents and from many lands um, playing the first shepherd whose name is Cole is Hi I'm Steve Longstaff retired academic uh, living in the northwest of England Yes, and as the second shepherd, Gib. Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm found in Stratford upon Avon occasionally, now currently in Berkshire. Yes, and as the, the third shepherd, whose name is Daw. Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm starting to think that the Wakefield master or mistress sounds a bit like a serial killer, but maybe that's me. You know, you may have something there. And as the dastardly Mac, the sheep stealer, we have. Uh, the Dastardly Joe from the Northeastern United States, where it's snowing. How festive. Uh, and, uh, uh, and as Jill, the Angel, and Mary, we have... Katrina Nimmo, um, and I am up in uh, not-so-snowy Scotland. Well, we can just hope for some snow. I am your guest host, Liza Graham, uh, not Rob Crichton, inexplicably. And uh, we open on a, on a rather cold and, and snowy, possibly snowy moor, uh, somewhere biblical that also resembles Yorkshire. Uh, Kat, what is that stage direction that we start with? Uh, hang on. Um, does it just mean um, the things begin? <laughs> The things begin <laughs> on this uh, beautifully. Yeah, it's a bit, of, bit of a weird one, but yeah. I think it just means yeah, things begin. <laughs> you know, that's what a good way to start a play. Things begin, <laughs> uh, Stephen. In your own time, if you would begin. Lord, well, these weathers are cold, and I am ill happed. I'm near hand dulled, so long have I napped. My legs they fold, my fingers are chapped. It is not as I would, for I am all lapped in sorrow, in storms and tempest, now in the east, now in the west. Woe is him as never rest, midday nor morrow. But we silly husbands that walks on the moor, in faith we're near hands out of the door. No wonder as it stands if we be poor, for the tilt of our lands lies fallow as the floor as ye ken. We're so hammed for taxed and rammed, we're made hand tamed with these gentlery men. Thus they reave us our rest, our lady them weary. These men that are lord fest, they cause the plough tarry. But men say is for the best, we find it contrary. Thus are husbands oppressed in point to miscarry on life. Thus hold they us under, thus they bring us in blunder, and it were great wonder in ever we should we thrive. We may get a paint sleeve or a brooch now on days, woe is him that him grieve, or once again says, dare no man him reprieve what mastery he may is, and yet may no, no man leave one word that he says, no letter. He can make purveyance with boast and braggance, and all is through maintenance of none that are greater. There shall come a swain as proud as a poe. He must borrow my wain, my plough also, and I am full fain to grant or he go. Thus live we in pain, anger and woe by night and day. He must have it, he land, if I should forgang it. I would better be hanged than once say him nay. He does me good as I walk thus by my arm, 
this world for to talk in manner of moan. To my sheep will I stalk and hearken in on, there abide on a bulk or sit on a stone full soon. For I trow per day, true men, if they be, we get more company, or if they do. Enter second shepherd. And stay, Dominus, what may this be mean? Why fares this world thus? Oft have we not seen. Lord, these weathers are spiteous, and the winds full keen, and the frost so hideous, they water mine eye. No lie. Now in dry, now in wet, now in snow, now in sleep, when my shoes freeze to my feet, it is not all easy. But as far as I can, or yet as I go, we silly wed men dread mickle woe. We have sorrow then and then, it falls oft so. Silly couple, our hen, both to and fro, she cackles, but she begin to croak, to groan or to cluck. Woe with tick, woe is him, is our cop, for he is in the shackles. These men that are wed have not all their will, when they are full hard stead, they sigh full still. God, what they are of Ned, full hard and full ill, in bower nor in bed, they say not there till this tight. My part have I found, I know my lesson, woe is him that is bound, for he must abide. But now, late in our lives, a marvel to me, that I think my heart rives such wonders to see. What that destiny drives, it should so be. Some men will have two wives, and some men three in store. <sighs> some are woe that has any. But so far can I. Woe is him that has many, for he feels sore. But young men of wooing, for God that you bought, be well aware of wedding and thinking your thought. And I wist is a thing that serves of naught. Mickle still warning has wedding home bought, brought, and grace with many a sharp shower, for thou may catch in an hour that shall sow thee full sour as long as thou leaves. For as ever art read in pistol, I have one to my fair. As sharp as this, and as rough as a briar, she is browed like a bristle with a sour loud and clear. And she wants wet her whistle, she can sing full clear her painter noster. She is as great as a whale, she has a gallon of gal. By him that died for us all, I would I had run till I had lost her. <laughs> God, look over the roar, who oh, deftly ye stand. Yea, the devil in thy moor, so tarry, and saw thou o'er a door. Yea, on a Leyland heard I him blow. He comes here at hand, not far, stand still. Why? Well, for it comes, hope I. He will make us both alive, but if we beware. Enter Third Shepherd. Christ crossed me speed, and Saint Nicholas, there all I had need, it, was wor it is worse than it was. Whoso would take heed and let the world pass, it's, it's ever in dread, and brickles, glass, and slide, slides. This world fared never so, with marvels and woe, mo, now in weal and now in woe, and all thing writhes. Was never no, since no, was never since Noah such floods seen. Winds and rains so rude and storms so keen. Some stammered, some stood in doubt as I ween. Now God all turned to good, I say as I mean. For ponder, these, these floods, so they drown both in fields and in town, and bears all down, and that is a wonder. We, we that walk on the nights our cattle to keep, we see sudden sights when other men sleep. <laughs> Yet me think my heart lights, I see shrews peep. Ye all are ye are all too too old whites. So I will give my sheep a turn, but full ill I have have I meant as I walk on this bent. I may lightly repent my toes if I spurn. Ah, sir, God you save and master mine. A drink fain would I have and somewhat to dine. Christ, curse my knave! Thou art a leather hind. What the? Boy, list rave, abide on to sign. We have made it our thrift on thy pay. The shrew came later, he is in state to dine if he had it. 
Such servants as I that sweats and sweetles eats our bread full dry, and that me for thinks. We are oft wet and weary when master men winks, yet comes full lately both dinners and drinks. But nately, both our dame and our sire, when we have run in the mire, they can nip at our hire and pay us full lately. But hear my truth, master, for the fare that ye make, I shall do their after work as I take. I shall do a little, sir, and among ever lack, for, ever, for yet lay my supper never on my stomach in fields. Where to should I threep? With my staff I can, can I leap? And men say, like cheap, leatherly for yields. Well, we're an ill lad to ride on wooing with a man that had but little of spending. Oh, peace, boy, I bade. No more jangling, or I shall make thee full mad by the heavens, king, with thy gauds. Where are our sheep, boy? We scorn. Sure, this the same day at morn, I, I them left in the corn when they rang lords. They have pasture good, they cannot go wrong. That's right, by the rude. These nights are long. Yet yeah, I would, for we owed, one give us a song. So I thought as I stood to mirth a sermon. I grant. Let me sing the tenery. And I the treble so high. Then the mean force to me, let's see how you try. <laughs> And they sing. The lyrics and the music to the song has not survived. Um, so you may imagine what the shepherds are singing about. Um, and then we have another of the original stage directions in Latin. Kat, if you'd do the honors. Oh, um, so Mac comes in wearing a cloak over his toga. Um, <laughs> presumably, he's uh, presumably his clothes. Yes. Uh, Mac is wearing some kind of some kind of uh, yes you can see he's he's wearing a cloak and uh, and yes what says the dastardly Mac? Thou Lord for thy name seven that made both moon and stars well more than I can never thy will Lord of me thorns I am all uneven that moves oft my harns now would God I were in heaven. But there weep no barn so still. Oh, who is that? Pipes so poor. Would God ye wist how I fore. Lo, oh, a man that walks on the moor, and has not all his will. Ack, where hast thou gone? Tell us tiding. Is he come? Then ilk to one take heed to his thing. What? It be a yeoman, I, I tell you, of the king, the self and the same, sent from a great lording and such. Fie on you, goeth hence out of my presence. I must have reverence. Why, who be ich? Why make ye it so quaint, Mac, ye do wrong? But Mac, list ye saint. I trow ye that ye long. I trow the shrew can paint, the devil might him hang. Ick shall make complaint, and make you all to thwang at a word, and tell even how you doth. Well, Mac, is that sooth? Now take out that southern tooth and set in a turd. Mac, the devil in your eye, a stroke would I lean you. Mac, know you not me. And by God, I could teen you. Oh, God, look you all three. Me thought I had seen you. You are a fair company. Can you now mean you? True peep, as late as thou goes, what will men suppose? And that was an ill noise of stealing of sheep. And I am true as steel, all men what? But a sickness I feel that holds me full what? My belly fares not well, is out of a state? Seldom lies the devil, all dead by the gate. Uh, therefore, full sore am I, and ill. If I stand stone still, I ate not a needle this month and more. How fares the wife by the hood? How fares she? Uh, lies weltering by the rude, by the fire, though 
and a house full of brood. Uh, she drinks well too. Ill speed other good that she will do, but show eats as fast as she can, and ilk year that comes to man, she bring forth a lacking, and some years too. But were I now more gracious and richer by far, I were eaten out of house and of harbour. <laughs> Yet is she a foul douse, if you come nar. Uh, there is none that trows or knows a war, then can I. Now will you see what I proffer, to give all in my coffer, to mourn it next to offer her me head mass penny. The shepherds prepare to sleep. I wot so for waked is none in this shire. I would sleep if I take less to my hire. I'm cold and naked and would have a fire. I am weary for naked and run in the mire. Wake thou. Hey, I will lay, lie down by, for I must sleep truly. As good a man's son was I as any of you. But, Mac, come hither. Between shall thou lie down. Uh, then might I let you be done, as that you would ruin? No dread. From my top to my toe, manus tuus commendo, Pontio Pilato, Christ cross me speed. And there we'll pause for a quick discussion, uh, now that it's uh, bedtime for shepherds. Um, so lovely, lovely little bit of scene setting there uh, by, by the playwright. Um, and uh, yeah, what, one gets a sense of the three shepherds as quite different people. What, what's, what's your feeling, Stephen? Uh. Well, yes. I mean, they're not—they're not just generic, are they? They're not—they're um, not the sort of, uh, and also they're not the sort of, you know, piping from the hillside of, you know, standard pastoral, are they? You know, this kind of notion that a shepherd's life is a, is a sort of carefree one because all you've got to do is sit around and look at sheep all day, which, you know, may have its temptations, but is really not a bad life. Um, and here we've got it's it's uh, it's very very logged into to the social world, isn't it? You know, we've we've kind of given a, a and they share that. It seems to me they share this kind of sense of everything being very difficult and, and being against them. Um, but we uh, but there's been some care given to sort of delineate the the dynamics between them, so they're not all just saying the same thing. It's it's true the. Um... The relationship of the shepherds is never stated, but you get a sense that there's at least a hierarchy, uh, and that the third shepherd might be on the bottom of that hierarchy. Uh, Eric, how does it feel to be third shepherd? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, he's at the bottom of the pile, isn't he? He's just like um, the, the guy who does the well, the heavy work, apparently, because yeah, um, they're they're all like, "Oi, where are the sheep?" And you know, they're, they're what are they doing if they're not looking after the sheep as well? So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, the, the implication is that Daw, that, that, that either the first or second shepherd, probably the second, is Daw's master. Um, he's, you know, an apprentice shepherd, a sort of noob shepherd, if you will. Um, and, and Greg, you're stuck in the middle here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of feel that I might be about it. It was interesting. I, my, my first question was, why is this called the Sh Second Shepherd's Pay? <laughs> well, it's really Max. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I loved that opening speech of Second Shepherd. The description of his home life is so vivid. It's glorious. <laughs> it's it's true the 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 first shepherd talks about um how how those in authority take advantage of of the of the working people uh and the second shepherd uh well his wife seems to be an authority <laughs> and and then the third shepherd seems concerned about climate change <laughs> it's worrying i mean <laughs> It's nice to know they had those fears in the 14th, 15th century, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. And and then we and then we get Mac and Joe, what's your what's your feeling about Mac so far? Desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't quite understand this like why in the middle of the pasture he's putting on airs. <laughs> but we'll see. I don't I'm not familiar with this play. But he does, I do get this sense that um he's hungry. He's poor, and he'll do anything. Yeah, and it's interesting that the shepherds all seem to know him and and know that. Um, I su I suppose I'm not quite sure how many people were living in Wakefield at this time, but uh, it seems like they're all part of a quite small community. Um, and and uh, yeah. So any other thoughts? Kat, feel free to jump in with any thoughts whatsoever on anything that is happening. <laughs> it's just so lovely to hear it all brought to life, actually. I mean, I've, I've, scanned, I've read through it a couple of times now and uh, having it all in my own voice in my head was just nothing compared to listening to you guys. So it's, it's nice to hear, as you said, the hierarchy and the relationship that really specifically well characterized individuals you kind of think that maybe they're based on real life people that the playwright knew um, and it's so it's so similar to life like country life up here now um, I mean I grew, I grew up on a tenant farm and uh, really it's it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a hun like hundreds of years ago it seems like 20 years ago when I was growing up <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, com complete with complaints about the lords of the manor doing oh, te like, terrible things. For days. <laughs> <laughs> so the, sh the shepherds have now lain down to sleep. They've insisted that Mac lie in between them, presumably so they'll know if he gets up. Uh, and yet uh, Mac, is, Mac is on his feet and some mischief is afoot here. Uh, the shepherds sleep, and Mac says... Now we're time for a man that lacks what he would to stalk privily then unto a fold, and nemely to work then, and be not too bold, for he might abide the bargain if, he, if it were told at the ending. Now we're time for to rail. But he needs good counsel, that fain would fare well, and has but little spending. About you a circle round as a moon, till I have done that I will, till that it be noon, that he lies stone still, till what that I have done, and I shall say there till of good words a few on height. Over your heads, my hand I lift, out go your iron, for do your sight, but yet I must make better shift, and it be right. Lord, what they sleep hard, <laughs> that may ye all hear. Was I never a shepherd, but now will I leer. If the flock be scared, yet shall I nip near. How draws hitherward, hitherward? Now men's are cheer from sorrow. Oh, a fat sheep, I dare say, a good fleece dare I lay. Left quit when I may, but this Will I borrow? Max steals a sheep and takes it to his house. Oi, how, Gil, art thou in? Give, give us some light. Who makes such a din at this time of night? I am set for to spin. I hope not I might rise a penny to win. I shrew them on height. So fares a housewife that's been to writ that's been to be raised thus between here may no note be seen for such small chairs good wife open the heck sees now not what i bring i may thole ye dray the sneck ah, come in my sweeting eh hey, thou thou art not wreck of my long standing by the naked neck art thou like for to hang do way i am worthy my meat for in the straight can I get more than they that swink and sweat all the long day. <laughs> Thus it fell to my lot, Gil. I had such 
uh, Grace. <laughs> it were a foul blot to be hanged for the case. I have scaped guilt off this hard a glaze. But so long goes the pot to the water, men says, at last comes it home broken. Well, no I the token, but let it never be spoken. But come, and help fast. I would who were flaying, I list well eat. This twelve month was I not so fain of one sheep meat. Come they, or he be slain, and hear the sheep bleat. Then might I be ta'en? That were a cold sweat. Go, spar the gate door. Yes, Mac, for and they come at thy back. Uh, then might I buy for all the pack, the devil of the ware. A good bird have I spied, sang thou came none. And shall we him hide till they be gone? In my cradle abide, let me alone, and I shall lie beside in childbed and groan. Thou red, and I shall say thou was light of a knave child this night. <laughs> Now well is me day bright that I ever was bred. This is a good guise and a far cast. Yet a woman's advice helps at the last. I won't never who spies again thou fast. Uh, but I come, or they rise, else blows a cold blast. I will go Mac sleep. goes back Mac goes back to the shepherds and lies down with them. I will go sleep. It sleeps all this many, and I shall go stock privily, as it had never been I that carried their sheep. The shepherds awaken. Resurrect some more true us. Have all my hand. Judas, Carnus Dominus, I may well not stand. My foot sleeps by Jesus, and I welter fast stand. I thought that we laid us full near England. Oh, yea, Lord, what I have slept well, as fresh as an eel, as light I me feel, as late for a tree. Bens to be, be herein, so me quakes, my heart is out of skin, what so it makes, who makes all this din so my brows breaks, to the door will I win. Hark, fellows, wakes, we were four, see ye or Mac now? We were up or thou? Man, I give God a vow, well, yet, yeah, yeah, he did near. Methought he was lapped in a wolfskin. So are many hapt, now namely within. When we had long napped, we methought with the gin of a fat sheep he trapped, but made no din. Still the dream, me, dream makes thee wood. It, it is but phantom, mother rude. God turn all to good, if it be his will. Rise back for shame, thou lies right long. Oh, no, Christ, holy name be as a monk. What is this? Oh, for Saint Jamie, I may not well gang. I trow I be the same. Oh, my neck has lain wrong enough. Ah, oh, ooh, mickle thank. Sin yester eve, and now by Saint Stephen, I was flayed with a sweeve, and my heart out of sloth. I thought Gill began to croak and travail full sad, well near at the first cock of a young lad for to mend our flock. Then be I never glad I have toe on my rock more than ever I had. I head, a house full of young tharms, the devil knock out their harns. Woe is him has many barns and there too little bread. I must go home, but by your leave, to Gill, as I thought, I, I pray you look my sleeve that I steal not. Uh, I am loath you to grieve or from you take aught. Go forth, ill might thou chief. Now would I we sought this morn that had that we had all our sore. And I will go before. Let us meet. Where? At the crooked thorn. <laughs> yes, and before we get to Mac's house, let's pause quickly. Um so we've had Mac and Jill, uh, a, a, a couple who seem to, who, a, a couple whose conversation seems very familiar to a lot of us. Uh, the second shepherd talked a lot about the sorrow and woe that is in marriage. Um, Kat, what's your impression of Jill? Um, maybe I'm a bit over sympathetic, but 
it seems like she doesn't sit at house and drink all day, um, but rather she's getting an early night so that she can look after the animals in the morning and then Mac arrives with a bloody adventure that's gone wrong and she's got to fix it. Um, and I think that's probably a pretty old story. <laughs> it, it is. And it's, it's worth noting that um, medieval women spent something like 80% of their leisure time in the production of textiles in, of one kind or another. So they would spin, they would knit, they would weave, they would sew. Um, they, and, and Jill said, I am set for to spin, which is something you can only do sitting down. Um, and, and yet she always has to get up and look after one thing or another. And, and she's, uh, you, 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 can, you can see where her attitude comes from. Um, and, and yes, Joe, what kind of relationship does Mac have with his wife? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the jury's still out. I think he loves her. I mean, he, know, he, he he uses her as an excuse quite a bit. You know, it's the woman at home that, you know, she just cries all the time. She's hungry all the time. She's this, that, and the other all the time. I better go back to her and make her happy. Yes, Eric. It's kind of that thing from Le Mis where you've got like the master of the house and all that stuff. It's very much that dynamic, I feel, but because like they're they're willing to steal a sheep and hide it and, as a child. Um, so yeah. Also, I, I was impressed that there was actually that thing of like you know the whole neck thing of like oh yeah I got to stretch and stuff, which is like we still have that I guess except now we usually have it with computers instead of like lying down on the ground with sheep. It's it's true. We uh, although you know if you have been camping with or without sheep, uh, you you do know that feeling in the morning. Uh, uh, sh sheep are optional, but I'm told they can be quite soft and pillowy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, memories. Anyway, <laughs> um, but you're right, Eric. They are quite like the Thénardiers, another famous criminal couple from Victor Hugo's Les Misérables and the musical of the same name. Um, and uh, yeah, they're uh, they're a right couple of wrongins, but you get the sense they kind of deserve each other. There's that friction, but they also seem to understand each other rather well. Um, but we'll see as as we go on. Uh, Greg or Stephen or both? Any thoughts? It's funny as well. <laughs> we, we, we sometimes kind of do sort of end up, you know, uh, being over reverential to to the characters and their and their important motivations. So I think you know the the sort of absurdity of the scene, you know, made all the better by the fact of them playing it straight, as it were. Um, so uh, you know, the kind of the the energy in it is um, is is the kind of sort of it's it's to do with very common comic situations isn't it um, no matter yeah. how you decide to play yeah there's that old child ballad isn't there get up and bar the door and they're arguing from the other side of the door but uh it, who has to open the door seems to be a major bone of contention uh, between mac and jill <laughs> sorry Stephen, i interrupted you in mid-flow though are you no you didn't Finished. Well, that that is a felicitous thing. So the um, so the sheep is at Mac and Jill's house. Uh, they've they've decided to disguise the sheep as a baby. How well this works, I guess we're about to see. Uh, because uh, the the sleeping shepherds and Mac have awoken. Mac pretended he'd never left. Uh, he's now said a formal goodbye to the shepherds. Had them check his sleeves in case he was concealing any sheep in his sleeves. No, I don't know either. And uh, children's conjurer. Exactly, exactly. Um, now you see a sheep. Now, now you really don't. Uh, anyway, uh, Mac has now arrived back at his house uh, in something of a hurry. It it appears, and uh, and uh, take it away, Mac. Undo this door. Who is here? How long shall I stand? Who makes such a beer? Now walk in the Wenyand. Ah, Jill, what cheer? It is I, Mac, your husband. Then may we be here, the devil in a band, 
Sir Guile, lo, he comes with a lot, as he were holden in the throat. I may not sit at my note and han long while. Will ye hear what fair she makes to get her a close, and does not but lax and close her toes? Why, who wonders, who wakes, who comes, who goes, who brews, who bakes, what makes thus house, oh, what makes thus hose, <laughs> and then is Ruth to behold, now in hot, now in cold, foo woeful is the household that wants a woman. And what end hast thou made in, with the herders, Mac? The last word that they said when I turned my back, they would look that they had their sheep all the pack. I hope they will not be well paid when they their sheep lack per day. But how so the game goes, to me they will suppose and make a foul noise and cry out upon me. But thou must do as thou height. I accord me their till. I shall swaddle him right in my cradle. If it were a greater slight, yet could I help till, I will lie down straight, come hap me. I will. Behind, come call in his marrow, they will nip us full narrow. But I may cry out, hurroo, the sheep if they find. Hearken I when they call, they will come and they will come anon. Come and make ready all, and sing by thine own. Sing lule thou shall, for I must groan and cry out by the wall on Mary and John for sure. Sing lulai on fast, when thou hears at the last, and but I play false cast, trust me no more. The shepherds meet at the crooked thorn. I call good morn, why sleeps thou not? Alas, that ever I was born, we have a foul blot, a fat weather of we lawn. Mary God for bot. Who should do us that scorn of a foul spot? Come through. I thought with my dogs, all Horbury shrugs, and of fifteen hogs found I but one you. Now try me if you will, by St. Thomas of Kent, either Mac or Joe was at that ascent. Peace man, be still. I saw when he went. Thou slanders him, ill. I ought to repent, good speed. Now ever as, now as ever might I day, if I should even near die, I would say it were he that did that same deed. Go we thither, Irene, and run on our feet. Shall I never eat bread? Then sooth will I wit. I'll drink in my head with him till I meet. I will rest in no stead till him, till that I am greet my brother, one I will height, and I see him in sight. Shall I never sleep one night? There I do another. The shepherds go to Mac's house. Will ye hear how they hack our sireless croon? Yeah, I never know the track so clear out of town. Call on him. Mac, undo your door soon. Oh, who is it that spake as if it were noon on loft? Who is that, I say? Good fellows were at day. As far as ye may, good, speak soft. Over a sick woman's head that is at malise, I had liefer be dead, or she had any disease. Oh, go to another stead. I may well not queeze. Each foot that ye tread goes through my knees so high. Tell us, Mac, if ye may, how fare you, I say? Are ye in this town at today? Now how fare ye? Ye have run in the mire and are wet yet. I shall make ye a fire if ye will sit. A nurse would I hire. Think ye on yet? Well, quit is my hire, my dream, this is it. A season. I have barns, if ye knew, well more than enow, but we must drink as we brew, and that is but reason. I would ye dined, or ye yod, methink that ye sweat. Nay, nor the men's our mood drink nor meat. Why, sir, ails you up but good? Yea, our sheep that we get are stolen as the yod. Our loss is great. Sirs, drinks. Had I been there, some should have bought it full sore. Nay, some men trows that ye were, and that us for thinks. 
Some men trials that it should be ye. Either ye or your spouse, so say we. And now if ye have supposed to Jill or to me, come and rip our house and then may ye see who had her. If I any sheep fought, either cow or stot, and Jill, my wife, rose not, here since she laid her, as I am true and leal to God, here I pray, that this be the first meal that I shall eat this day. Because I have seal, advise thee, I say. He learned timely to steal that could not say nay. I so welt, out thieves from my wounds, ye come to rob us for the nonce. Hear ye not how she groans? Your heart should melt. Out thieves from my barn, nigh him not there. Wish ye how she had fair in your hearts would be sore. You do wrong, I you warn, that thus comes before to a woman that has forown. But I say no more. Ah, my meddle, I pray to God so mild, if ever I you beguiled, that I eat this child that lies in this cradle. A peace, woman, for God's pain, and cry not so. Thou spills thy brain, and makes me full woe. Oh, how are she be slain, what find ye to? Or work we in vain, as well, ye, uh, as well may we go. But, patters, I can find no flesh, hard nor nesh, salt nor fresh, but two-toned platters, which cattle but this, but tame nor wild, none as I have, as have I bliss, as loud as he smelled. No, so God me bless, and give me the joy of my child. Now mark the miss, I hold us beguiled. Sir Dunn, sir, our lady him save, is your child a knave? Any lord might have, might him have, uh, this child to his son. When he wakens, he kips, that joy is to see. In good time to his hips and in silly, but who was this gossip so soon ready? So fair for their lips. And... Oh, no, a lie. So God them thank, Parkin and Gibbon Waller, I say, and gentle John Horn in good fay. He made all the garay with the great shank. Back friends will we be, for we are all one. We, now I hold for me, for men's get I none. Uh, farewell, all three, all glad were ye gone. Few fair words may there be, but love there is none this year. Gave ye the child anything? I trow not one farthing. Fast again will I fling, abide ye me there. Mac, take it to no grief if I come to thy barn. Nay, thou does me great reprieve, and foul hast thou farn. The child will it not grieve that little day starn. Mac, with your leave, let me give your barn but sixpence. Uh, nay, nay, do way. He sleeps. Me think he peeps. Oh, when he wakens, he weeps. I pray you, go hence. Give me leave him to kiss and lift up the clout. What devil is this? He has a long snout. He is marked amiss. We wait till about. Spun wefty whiz, so if fat comes foul out, I so he is like to our sheep. Oh, Gib, may I peep? I try a kind will creep where it may not go. This was a quaint gold and a far cast. It was a high fraud. Yea, sirs, wast let burn this board and bind her fast. A false scold hang at the last. So shall thou. Will you see how they swaddle his four feet in the middle? So I never in a cradle will horn the ladder now. Peace, bid I. What? Let be your fair. I am he that him get, and yon women he bear. What devil should he hat? Mac? Lo, oh, God, Mac's heir. That be all the hand. No, God give him care. I saw. A pretty child is he, as sits on a woman's knee, a dilly down per day, to guard a man laugh. I know him by the earmark. That is a good token. 
I tell you, sirs, hark, his nose was broken. Sivan told me a clerk that he was forespoken. This is a false work. I would fain be broken. Get weapon. No, he was taken with an elf. I saw it myself. When the, struck, when the clock struck twelve, he was for shapen. Ye take it too, I well felt theft same in a stead. And they maintain their theft, let them let do them to dead. If I trespass eft, gird off my head, with you will I be left. Sirs, do my read, for this trespass we will neither ban nor flight, but fight, but nor flight, nor fight, nor dread, but have done as tight and cast him in canvas. And they cast Mac in canvas, and there we will pause for uh for discussion of um, <laughs> of uh, the action that has just happened, as well as casting <sighs> people in canvas, Stephen, would you like to tell tell us what what casting in canvas is? I I, I don't know. I imagine it's a, a tossed in a blanket kind of thing, so chopping him up in the air. I I think you're right. At least that's how I've always seen him done, and I've seen it done with with an actor and a dummy dressed like Mac that they that can be thrown very high with no ill effects. Um, although I suppose you could bring in a trampoline, depending on what kind of production it was. I, I think that the, the National Theatre production in the 80s, which did a version of this, they had him uh, kind of in the stocks, but they got all the children in the audience to throw sort of wet sponges at him and stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, that sounds fun. Audience participation could be hazardous for your cast. I, I don't know if equity will permit it. Uh, I suppose it depends what people are throwing and where you're touring to. <laughs> um, so another thing to note here uh, is the custom of bringing gifts to a newborn child. Uh, the shepherd offers to... Uh, the, the shepherds are about to leave and then they realize they're about to leave without giving the child anything. Uh, and that's a social faux pas. And they offer him a sixpence, which is a lot of money uh, for a shepherd in the 1400s. Mm. I, th I think in some of the other versions of this scene, I think they offer him like their sock and that sort of thing. You know, they kind of give him ran random things because they haven't got much. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, given that though this play has had pretty much zero to do with the Bible so far, we are about to attend the Nativity, and we've just had this scene where, where Jill is demanding homage for her child, who's a sheep. Uh, and uh, yeah, Jill never admits wrongdoing, does she, Kat? She just like keeps that pretense going. No, an elf took him, I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, she she never um, she never breaks character. Um, it's all it's all fake news that this this child's a sheep, you know. And how dare you say that my child looks like a sheep? Um, I'm going to I litigate. <laughs> uh, Eric, yes. Well, also the rhyme has changed. It, it was like you know at the beginning it was like four chunks, uh, uh, you know, four rhyming words, and then like one by itself, and then three. Uh, with the rhymed and then one by itself that rhymed with the you know the one in the middle, but now it seems to have changed to like read, trespass, flight, tried, tight, and canvas, which is quite like uh, it, it seems to be faster now because of the action. You know, like the the second shepherd rhymes with the first shepherd, rhymes with the third with the with Mac and so on and so forth. Yeah, and and that's an absolute hallmark of this playwright. It's how um. The Townley cycle is, I forget how many plays, but six of them are in this verse form. And the verse is so well written that they think those six must be written by the same person. And that's pretty much all they know about, the, about this, this playwright, apart from, apart from their plays are hilarious and they're really good at the verse. And when they've got, as you say, multiple characters on stage finishing each other's lines, you do have uh, what we on this podcast have previously called the rap battle aspect of, of, of these rhymed verse plays. Um, so, so, yeah, um, Joe, what's, uh, what's your thought about, about Mac's outcome here? Has justice been done? Um, well, I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know yet. Um, I, I, he's maintaining his innocence as right till the end. <laughs> and it's got to be pretty funny, I think, when they finally look at the uh, baby and realize it looks remarkably like a sheep. And even still, it's like, oh, uh, he broke his nose. It's not, it's not, it's not, what are you talking about? And I, I thought, I mean, I guess it makes sense. The casting in canvas is, that makes sense, throwing him up. Although I don't know what kind of pain that would cause. I thought it might have been he he was wrapped in a in a rug so so that he couldn't move and he couldn't get away kind of thing that that would also work on stage you could uh, you could you could wrap your actor in a rug and then you could you know have you could you would have them have the other three kick him or or beat him or something uh, right and if that were that that could be done in a way that would be effective for the audience and safe for the actors so that yeah um, Greg, how would you prefer to punish Mac? I don't know. <laughs> I think, um, leave him on the hillside personally, but you know, <laughs> give him a week's worth of very snowy weather to shepherd him. I suppose the advantage of, to, of casting in canvas, if it's the sort of thing that I mentioned, it might work with some others, is it, it, it involves sort of communal cooperation to punish the sort of the freeloader. So there's, there might be a, a sort of a symbolic element to it because they, they they sort of set it up as being quite dangerous, don't they? Saying, right, I'm going to kill you. Where's my weapon? And all, all this kind of thing. You know, it's fairly, fairly violent society, it seems, you know, fairly rough and ready. Well, they can't do that. Well, what, you know, this, this, it's, it would be something with a bit of vigor, at least. And it would also be about asserting a sort of community norm in a visual image, which is one of the things that sort of punishments, social sanctions from this period tended to deal in quite strong images, you know, sort of punishing unruly wives and, and, and poor husbands and so forth. So it, is it something to do with that? Is that, is that part of it? It's not just sort of somebody is, somebody is uh, punished but but the, the social nature of of the punishment um, becomes sort of clear yeah yeah i mean uh if you're going to punish someone publicly ideally it should be in a form that that can be can be made into a sort of grisly woodcut illustration and distributed to all the neighboring towns uh to deter other other criminals I, I have to say, thinking about Joe's image of the of of Mac being wrapped up in canvas, um, I kind of like that as a counterpoint to the swaddled sheep that, you know, oh, Mac yeah. gets wrapped up and then I don't know may, maybe they pull one end of the blanket and just roll him off stage or something. Um, well, hold the hold the sheep next to him. <laughs> so the three shepherds are done with the casting in canvas and and they're all feeling a little bit whew, exhausted um Sorry. here we go first first shepherd in your own time oh, oh i'm sore in point for to breast faith i may i may no more therefore will i rest the sheep of seven score we weighed in my fist for to sleep anywhere methinks of thy list now i pray you lay down on this green on these thieves yet i mean where to you sh should ye teen do as i say you they sleep and the angel appears do we have to sing glory in excelsis there is a stage direction that the angel sings Gloria in Excelsis. You, you, you do not have to. If you wish to, you may. But we, but we may also take it as read that it has been sung. Either way, it has been sung. It has Rise. been sung. <laughs> Rise, Hardman Hend, for now he now is he born that shall take from the fiend that Adam has lorn, that warlock to shend. This night is he born. God is made your friend, now at this morn he behests. At Bedlam go see, there lies that free in a crib full poorly betwixt two beasts. And the shepherds awaken. This was a quaint step that ever yet I heard. 
It's a marvel to heaven. Just to be scared. God, son of heaven, he spake up, Lord. All the wood on the leaven, me thought that he guard a, a pear. He spoke of a barn in Bethlehem, I you warn. That betokens yon star. Let us seek him there. Say, what, what was his song? Heard you not how he cracked it three breaths to a long? Yea, Mary, ye Mary, he hacked it. There was no crotchet wrong, nor nothing that lacked it. For to sing us among, bright as he hacked it, I can. Let's see how ye croon. Can ye bark at the moon? Hold your tongues, have done. Bark after, then. The shepherds sing Gloria in Excelsis. <laughs> and it's so beautiful, so beautiful. No. <laughs> To bedlam me, babe, that we should gang. I am full of fear that we tarry too long. We merry and not sad of mirth is our song. Everlasting glad to meet away we fang without noise. Aye, we thither for thee. If we be wet and weary to that child and that lady, we have it not to lose. We find by the prophecy, let be your team. Of David and Isaiah and more than I mean, they prophesied by clergy that in a virgin should he light and light a slope and our sin and slake it our kind from woe. For Isaiah said so. Like a Virgo concepit, a child that is naked. Full glad may we be and abide that day that lovely to see all might's may. Lord, well were me for once and and for a that might might kneel on my might I kneel on my knees some word for to say to that child, but the angel said in a crib he was laid he was poorly arrayed both meaner and mild. Patriarchs that has been and prophetess before, they desired to have seen this child that is born. They are gone full clean, out of their lawn. We shall see him. I ween, or it be morn to token. When I see him and feel, then won't I full well. It is true as steel that prophets have spoken. To so poor as we are that he would appear, first find and declare by his messenger. Go we now, let us fare. The place is near. I am ready in year. Go we in fear to that bright. Lord, if thy wills be, we are lewd, all three. Thou grant us some kind glee to comfort thy white. And they enter the stable. Hail, comely and clean. Hail, young child. Hail, maker, as I mean, of a maiden so mild. Thou hast worried, I ween, the warlock so wild. The false gyner of teen, now goes he beguiled. Lo, he merries. Lo, he laughs my sweeting, a well fair meeting. I hold on my heating, have a bob of cherries. Hail, suffering saviour, for thou hast a sort. Hail, freely void and flower that all thing has wrought. Hail, full of favour, that made all of naught. Hail, I kneel and I cower. A Bird have I brought to my barn. Hail, tiny mop of our creed, thou art crop. I would drink on thy cup, little day star. I hail, darling, dear, full of Godhead. May thee, I pray thee, be near when that I have need. Hail, sweet is thy cheer. My heart would bleed to see thee sit here in so poor weed with no pennies. Hail, put forth thy doll. I will bring thee but a ball. Have, have and play with all and go to the tennis. The Father of heaven, God omnipotent, that set all on seven, his son he has sent. My name could he never, and light or he went. I conceived him full, even though might as he meant, and now is he born. He keep you from woe, I shall pray him so. Tell forth as ye go, and mind on this morn. 
Farewell, lady, so fair to behold, with thy child on thy knee. He lies full cold, Lord, well is me. Now we go, thou behold. The sooth it already seems to be told full oft. What grace have we found? Come forth, now we are one. To sing are we bound, let's take on loft. Exeunt singing, and here ends the play. <laughs> I love the fact that after all the swagger and um, uh, joy, uh, games of the first sort of three quarters of the play, you suddenly get that absolute peace and calm. And they really are very reverential to the child. It's it's a lovely last scene that I think it's beautifully written. And they are so in awe of him. Yeah, yeah, it just, I always tear up at that scene and, and th today is no exception. It's, they're, they're reverential, but they're also addressing a baby. And it's, it does, you know, there's, I think it's that humanity that, that they give him they give him cherries, they give him a bird, and they give him a ball in case he wants to go to the tennis. Um, which Far is... more practical than the king's gifts, I have to say, when they turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Much, and, and you know, where did they get cherries in the middle of winter? Um, again, we uh, we don't know, but it must have been, must have been a miracle, mustn't it? Um, uh, Kat, what 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 is your thoughts? Um, I'm not familiar with this play or any early plays at all, um, and I was wondering what if somebody could help um, with what the message is regarding um, common religion, if you like, um, as in the first three quarters of the play when they're spouting nonsense Latin and they're you know mentioning strange biblical things seemingly out of context and then there's this revelation and suddenly the little bit of latin that comes next is concise and actually right um and um is there anything and things just kind of slot into place and so does does this is that the is that the mystery part of the play that there's the common religion that nobody believes in but then when there's a revelation like the the divine spirit um really really has a presence. I don't know. I I would say, I mean, I'll certainly open that to the floor, but the place the play definitely changes nature when we get to the bit that's actually in the Bible that's not just a knockabout comedy. It is a thing generally with mystery plays that uh that people will make the kind of commonplace religious religious oaths that they will normally make like they'll say by our lady even though at that point they don't know who our lady is or they'll say by him that died on rude even though you know he hasn't been born yet uh and and you know that kind of it loses dramatic cohesion but it is you it does gain you know a familiarity with how everyday people talk but you're right that uh, you and Greg are both right, I think, that the play takes this amazing turn. Um, uh, er Eric or Joe, do you, do you have thoughts? Thoughts? Any? I was quite enjoying the comedy, to be honest. I was like, <laughs> I don't care about the Christmas part. And then, like, suddenly we have this biblical scene, which is, I mean, you know, it was great, but also, like, you know, it's a big... It's like, yes, the, we, we, we're late, we're late. And then suddenly they appear at the stable. Um, obviously, yeah, we, 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 know, we know that plays um, don't really handle time very well at this point. But I mean, yeah, it's just kind of, yeah, it seems a very abrupt transition. Yeah, I mean, throughout this play, we've been shifting places. We've been going from the hill where the shepherds start out to Max's house and back again several times. And in each time, the, the journey seems to take no time at all. I don't know whether it would be a case of two pageant wagons, one representing the hill and one 
max house that could then be done a quick change to the stable or maybe the maybe the stable was a third wagon somewhere else in the square where the nativity itself had been played um that might that might make more sense or maybe there's somewhere um maybe there's somewhere where one end of the playing space can actually ha actually has grass on it maybe they don't need a pageant wagon to be the hills um you know there there are a lot of possibilities but however it's staged there has to either be i guess interstitial music or some kind of explanation of why it takes them almost no time at all to go from where they are to where they next are i'm, I'm talking a lot and this is your stephen stephen what? save us uh, what uh, well but they're not really there are they i i think i think that's that's the, you've got a double time going on haven't you you've it's it's a bit like you know our, our mate Bertolt Brecht with his placards, you know that we, we it's happening now and it's happening then at the same time, and and there's a there's a kind of um, I don't know a double consciousness I think you know that we are both sort of you know representing walking and actually walking in in our characters and the, you know the the kind of the kind of idea that there is a character in in the way that we sort of recognise them now. Can sometimes kind of stand in the way and get you scratching your head, but I just kind of sidestep all of that by going, "No, oh, it's both of them." You know, they're they're people presenting it as well as characters it's happening to. It's true, and there's that lovely line the third shepherd has near the end: "Is forsooth already it seems to be told full oft," mm -hmm. saying, "You know, they've just seen it, but." It seems they've heard it before many times. So you're oh, right. They they speak in their own person as well as in the person of the shepherd. To be fair, the, there is a lot of foreshadowing from the Old Testament. So some of this certainly is foretold. Sorry, we were doing this last night in church, but the whole thing of the the Old Testament foreshadowings. So it's quite interesting. I'm going to throw a question to Stephen, or to anybody else. Why is it called the Second Shepherd's Play? <laughs> he's a lovely part, and he's got one of the best speeches, but why? I, I have a feeling that they had two shepherds' plays, but I they, have to check that. They do. In the, in the manuscript of Townley Mystery Plays that contains, it's the only copy of the, these plays that we have, and it contains two shepherds' plays, uh, the first and the second, uh, Prima Pastorum and Secunda Pastorum. Oh, that's um, no fun. I forgive my character. Forgive my <laughs> terrible Latin cat. And um, so, in the I first, <laughs> the, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, in the first, the first play is about. This play is about seven hundred fifty lines of verse. The first one is about five hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's shorter. There's no Mac. Uh, instead, there's a boy called Jack Garcio, and they spend a lot of the play fighting over um, imaginary sheep uh, that they don't really have. But interestingly, in this play, that the, the where they ask Mac who he got to be godparents to his child at such short notice, um, and Mac throws them some names, and those are the names of the shepherds from the first shepherds play. <laughs> So it's a, it's a sequel. It's very much very, a sequel. Very meta. I'm gonna have to go back and read that. <laughs> it's it's meta. You know, you you have to have seen the old Star Trek. Uh... <laughs> Though I still want it to be my play. It's not fair. <laughs> Please. Please. In 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 all our hearts, it is your play. Uh, it's, it, it, I, 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 yeah, I love that. I, I think from the high comedy of his description of the, of the wife and the chickens, <laughs> <laughs> to go from that to just presenting the bird is just, it's a lovely journey. Yeah. And, uh, all the shepherds. I mean, I, I always saw that. What kind of bird does he give Jesus? Does he give him the troublemaking hen? Or I would so give him the troublemaking hen. I'd be like, there you go. <laughs> you can do that one. <laughs> I, I'd sort of pictured like a tiny bird that he had in his hands, but but no, maybe he just plucks a chicken right down there. <laughs> you could have some fun, couldn't you? you I mean, if, if somebody could kind of, you know, the, the sheep could be a glove puppet or something. <laughs> as well you could you could have all sorts of fun with these things 
It's it's true. Joe, what kind of sheep would you use? Would you use a puppet sheep or maybe a sheep on wheels or a, a stuffed animal sheep? Oh, I can't but help think of uh, the Wallace and Gromit cartoon and, you know, get a real life-size sheep. <laughs> I, I guess Mac's coat would have to be such that he could hide the sheep under his coat when he left. Right, a big cloak, yeah, it's the big cloak that he's got that, um, and then I think, isn't there a line that I took to mean, uh, look, there's nothing up my sleeve, look, I didn't take anything. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So um, you're, you're right, I think that is what it, that is what that means. Look my sleeve that I steal not. So I feel bad that like Mac is the one that needs salvation and they all slept. The angel appears, they're all there and they all have the same dream because they're comparing notes, first one, two, and three shepherds, but Mac doesn't get to go. And I mean, Jesus could have been his first miracle. It's, it's true. And you know, Jesus was famously merciful to thieves, uh, but, uh, but Mac doesn't get to meet Jesus. Um, he does get to hold his own nativity scene uh, with a lamb, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it is kind of sad. Perhaps uh, perhaps when Jesus is a little older, he'll he'll uh, he'll get to meet Mac. Um, but but meanwhile, you know. I love the idea of the same, I, the same actor, the same either a boy or maybe a woman played it, uh, doubling Jill and the Virgin Mary. <laughs> That's quite, yeah. That's quite clever. Yeah. So at this stage, I will go around the room uh, for for final thoughts. If you guys, uh, if if you guys are okay with that, um, and. First up, the flying fickle finger of fate lands on Eric. Yeah, I forgot to unmute. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. It's um, I, well, I've I, I've never encountered it before. So, um, but in the vein of all the other ones that we've done, like the weavers and you know the previous ones, um, yeah, it was it was fun to do. Uh, it did remind me of something else, but now I've forgotten what that was. So if, if I remember before we start recording now. Excellent. Uh, everyone else talk extra slow so Eric can remember. Um, and uh, Greg, your thoughts? Wonderful. Loved it. Great, great pre-Christmas treats. Well, I, I, you know, I think your reading was a treat. I w I, I'm so glad that we had the six of us in this room to read this. I'm, you know, I'm very grateful for you all. Um, and, you know, S Steve, but Stephen and Greg are the most familiar with the actual region that this play is from. So it was lovely to hear your regional voices. And, and Kat, you're only just north of the border. I, I mean, you you know uh, there there is a lot there are points of similarity between uh, the northern Middle English of this play and and Scots aren't there? Oh, I thought I, when I was first reading it, I would have told you it was in in a Scots dialect because um, yeah, I mean as I, as I said, I, I don't know anything about this um, this era or really much about the language at all, um, and the words like Ken and Bairn and you know there there's just word after word after word where you think actually yeah I don't, I don't have to look that one up you know sign the use of sign um was quite um well it's it's exactly what you'd expect in scots so um yeah it it was really it was lovely to read on the eyes but to listen to you guys bringing it alive was fantastic well i think you did you you brought it alive too i i think you really made jill live and i'm very grateful that uh you know, the spirit of Jill is grateful to have had such a strong advocate. <laughs> Even if I'd be missed out the other main verb, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we, you know, that that's the point of these exploring sessions, though, is to explore and uh, and cock ups are very much part of that. And I I didn't even notice any cock ups from you. Um, pardon my use of the word cock. Obviously, I'm talking about a chicken. Uh, <laughs> 
Much, much as Greg was, yes. <laughs> um, so, Greg, did I interrupt you? Do you have more uh, before we... Well, you know, uh, that is a, a wonderful reading. And, and Joe, Joe, what are your final thoughts? It, I, I like it in the sense that um, it reminds me of Chaucer, but it's easier to read. And the fact that all the words rhyme was probably, I mean, I don't think, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think acting was a profession when this came out. So it was probably done by common folk. And the simple short lines with rhyming in the vernacular or the colloquial language probably made it easy for anybody to, to perform this. It's true, the verse kind of has its own rhythm, its own structure, and it just kind of carries you forward. Um, and, and, you know, I did love the, the swagger you brought to Mac and the, the sort of righteous indignation at being suspected of such a base crime as sheep stealing. Um, what do you make of Mac now that now we're at the end? Uh, he is, you know, somebody's got to be the bad guy. And I see that he's the bad guy. You know, complaining about having a house full of kids, whether he did or not, I don't know. There's only the, there, actually, there aren't any of the, alleged children the barons that he's got at home in the play um but i imagine him having like 20 kids <laughs> and it's the old lady in the shoe kind of <laughs> existence that he has so i can't forgive what he does but i can understand it fair enough fair enough we're we're showing the shepherd's perspective very much and of course you know any 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 shepherds uh, in the 1400s, any shepherds watching this play would have also felt a certain indignation. But the playwright does give Mac, he gives Mac, you know, those, those wonderful introductory lines saying, you know, I would I were in heaven for there weep no barns. Um, he does have religion. So, so even before he's going to steal the sheep, he prays. Yeah. He does. I mean, he prays to Pontius Pilate, but he tries. <laughs> um, so he also casts a spell on the shepherds, which is decidedly unchristian. There, there is magic. You're right. He casts a sleeping spell. He casts a circle as round as a moon. And what we're, we are to make of that, you know, as a, as a depiction of, of, ma of magic in, in period, you know, would, would the audience be like, ooh, or... I don't know. I, I thought that was really interesting anyway, the sort of folk magic of it. Oh, this is the true meaning of Stonehenge. Now I understand. <laughs> yes, yes. Next time you watch Spinal Tap, it's going to have a whole new resonance. Um, I have remembered. Sorry, Ryan. Eric, yeah, yes, cause, Eric. Cause you were wasting time and then like I was, we got into a really interesting conversation and I didn't want to interrupt, but also, yeah. Um, no, it's just because like usually I look at plays and I go, okay, so what does this name, this character's name mean? And then, or like, what does it sound like? That kind of thing. And then a door got me thinking of Tarleton that we did together like a few, several months ago, uh, a few months ago, it was several. Well, I don't know. I don't know how long ago it was, but yeah, because like all his, all the really weird jokes are about like doors and Jack doors and, you know, the birds and how bad, how newbie they are i don't know how crap how evil i can't remember exactly but they were really really um like sort of shady birds it's it's true that um the the three shepherds all have sort of common names i think i, I think stephen that they're common right of the time um gib is short for gilbert uh daw is often seen as uh short for david uh, but daw also means fool uh, by comparison to a jackdaw. Uh, and, and jackdaws, you know, they just, um, they're a corvid, so, so you know they're up to no good. <laughs> crows and crows, jackdaws, chuffs, that kind of thing. Um, and jackdaws and chuffs are the junior members of the corvid family. They're the hangers on. Ravens get the sinister aspect and... Crows, well, crows are just crows. <laughs> and um, so, so that's a really good point about the name Daw and, and what it means. 
I don't think the character is a fool, though. He's the first to notice what Mac is up to. Yeah, but the, uh, it was just that thing of, like, sort of, I don't know, maybe, well, I'm guessing Tarleton was uh, much later. In, he he in was. So, he was. He's 1500s. Yeah, was no, he's about 100 yeah. years later. Yeah, so there was no link there, but, I mean, it, it just reminded me of that. That whole, like, yeah. <laughs> well, there is a bit of a link in that, uh, you know, how jackdaws are seen, I think, was more, was... I, I don't know if not a constant at least at least a similarity so I think it was a it was a good point and uh, and Stephen what are your final thoughts well I, I don't really have that many um, I, I like I like the pacing of it you know this kind of he casts a spell on them because we need to get to the next scene you know it's kind of a jump cut you know uh, and so I, I like that. It doesn't. It doesn't kind of let anything get in the way of this kind of reality TV sort of. Come on, come on, come on! I'm bored, you know. Uh, so I like that. I like that kind of. Um, uh, I don't know what the word would be. You know, efficiency um, compared to some plays I could mention, which, which you know, give you that as we were saying this afternoon, give you the 15 minute drum solo. You know, in the in, exactly the wrong place um and the other thing i suppose is it's not really about the play but i'm just struck at the sophistication of the of the christianity on display in it you know i think it it it, it somehow manages to bring uh I mean, it's sort of joe's point isn't it really i'm just repeating it but you know a, a world where people just lived and breathed this stuff and everybody did it and therefore it was part of every part of life you know it wasn't just something the song says that you wind, wound up on sundays you know and so it was it was part of profanity it was part of silliness you know there's a there's sort of venerable christian tradition of of kind of pointing out the absurdity of a god becoming man in the first place you know there's a whole sort of uh, series of uh, treatises and, and jokes you know to do uh, just because it is beyond our comprehension, it does seem silly, you know. And so, what I really—that's what I really liked about it. Actually, it was the kind of the—I kind of felt like I, you know, in whatever, however long it took us, or however long it take to see it, it would, you know, half an hour, you'd be dumped right into this world. Not just the Christian culture, actually, but you know, the what we have at the beginning, which is this kind of, you know, it's it's very rooted, it's very grounded, you know. It's it's just like you know you you're transported back, and I, I I kind of feel like I've got a real sense of huge amount of how how this society and culture work. Yeah, yeah, it's a very very human human play in that way. I mean, Stephen, you and you and I know it well. I think Greg knows it well too. And then we have we have three newcomers to it. I don't know uh, how whether whether you got that same feeling that that you sort of know these people definitely yeah um from from the off they were just so so this the characterization was just so sophisticated and intimate um and yeah the the christian values and then the resoundingly unchristian way that they treat mac um and you know it it's just there are just so many layers and it feels so close um, as opposed to, you know, a remote play that was written 600 years ago. Yeah, although, I don't know, Mac gets off quite lightly, does, doesn't he? They, uh, I mean, they, they don't beat him necessarily or, or do anything violent. Uh, I suppose, again, it depends. Well. Yeah, I mean, it depends what casting in canvas is and how, <laughs> you know, how, how much is done. But... Uh, no, I think I, I think you're right that uh, I, I liked your point from earlier about having grown up on a on a farm. Was that in sheep country as well? Oh, wait till I get. I'll just grab my my birthday present from a few weeks ago. Right. I'm I'm in suspense. I don't know about you guys. I was going to have it behind me, but I can. Um, well, I didn't really want to put it on the wall. This is my pet. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have cats and other people have. Oh, pets. bless him! Oh, oh. Jerry, um, because, because of his ears, he looks like Tom and Jerry. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, and growing up on a tenant farm, I, I never really thought of it as a privilege, but um, it really is when you get into something as weird as opera and plays and the arts, um, especially when you're looking at, you know, plays and things from, from way back, um, because, you know, you, you don't understand anything like Figaro or something, unless you've lived and breathed the feudal system. Um, and I was, well, I mean, I wasn't a servant, but my stepdad and my mum effectively were. Um, and it, it's just, yeah, and, and that, that life is still very, very current in rural Scotland. Um, I'm sure it's the same in Northern England, where there are big estates. Um, and it's just so strange how, how relatable something like this is where you know Liza you sent me the play <laughs> a few days ago with the original spelling and I was looking at it all cross-eyed looking up every other word going out mm -hmm. get through this. what the hell is going on and thank was, you for the spelling being updated oh my goodness what work you've done well done but yeah I mean and having never really looked through anything like this before um I just thought oh what have I got myself into? And then as soon as you guys brought the Shepherds Alive and Mac and it just, it all made sense. And I thought, gosh, I can name those people and they're, you know, they're still in Fife in their cottages, <laughs> stealing each other's sheep. <laughs> I think Jerry would have made a perfect Jesus, to be honest, in the, um, in the Mac scene. He is so affectionate. You would, you'd have trouble hiding his ears though. Well, no, we just have to change the line. Yeah, those, those, those ears are very, <laughs> Very hard to swaddle. Ah, uh, yes. You, you'd have to you'd have to give him one of those baby bonnets uh, to cover the ears. <laughs> oh, bless so him! He's brilliant. Uh, what what a good sheep! I'm glad you showed us Jerry. Yeah, I'm I'm just upset that my mum won't have it won't let me have him as a help sheep during lockdown. Oh, emotional oh. emotional support sheep. Everybody needs one. <laughs> yes, I, I, I would agree. And then the sheep need other emotional support sheep uh, because they're social. You can't have just one. And, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. And then you end up with a lot of uh, a lot of lovely wool to knit into sweaters and such. I can't see a downside, personally. Um. In indeed, not. So, um, any any more thoughts from the uh, from this loveliest of rooms? Oh. Well, it only remains for me to say that there are many other medieval mystery plays uh, available both on our YouTube channel and on our podcast. Links will be in the show notes. And Eric mentioned Tarleton earlier. We are issuing Tarleton's jests one by one on our Patreon. So if you care to share even a tiny amount of your sweet, sweet cash with us, um, you will receive, uh, by email, you will receive uh, Tarleton's jests. Uh, take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime author for, uh, for offer for some Elizabethan jokes, some of which are actually funny. Some are not. I was going to say, and as a patron, I can, I can say it's well worth it. Yes, there we go. I mean, Tarleton was famous in the 1500s for a reason, right? Um, and uh, we, shall, we shall be back, possibly with more sheep, maybe with more shepherds, um, definitely with more plays uh, at, the, at the same bat time and the same bat channel. So watch this space. And... Uh, uh, and from and uh, just reminds me to thank our wonderful room of readers who brought this play to life, and to say goodbye. Bye.